We got to show you. You're, you're going to be very excited that you tuned in uh, for this evening. I'll be talking to the great Salman Rushdie. will be joining us later about his new book, Knife. Fabulous uh, book and many other surprises. But before that, it's a big day for Donald Trump. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> his campaign for president was interrupted today by the trial uh, about the other time that he had tried to run for president. Look, let, let, let's just check in in another installment of America's Most Tremendously Wanted. The whole thing is a scam. After a week of jury selection, today it was finally time for opening statements, and it turns out the prosecution and the defense do not see eye to eye. <laughs> The prosecution arguing that Trump's alleged scheme to keep an adult film actress quiet is election interference, pure and simple in those words. Trump defense lawyer Todd Blanche told the jury that the former president, though, did not violate the law. Mm. <laughs> That's right. This is a classic case of the state of New York versus a uh, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. Uh, I think it's pretty clear he did it. Anyway. This trial will obviously be a test of the fairness of the American legal system, but it's also a test of the media's ability to cover Donald Trump in a responsible way, a task they have acknowledged they've performed poorly in the past. I think to the degree that the media had lessons turned in 16, they seem to have been learned. It's irresponsible for cable news networks to give Donald Trump hours and hours of free airtime. Way too much speculation and liberal wishful thinking and attempts to connect dots that did not connect. It's the media's responsibility to not get distracted. I think we were much too busy chasing after shiny objects. All of us have learned some very valuable lessons from the last couple of years um, in delineating what's significant, what's important. So brave. <laughs> well done. And I think for this trial, we will see the seeds of that introspection bear fruit. Or we will learn that learning curves are for pussies. Here we go. It's on. It's happening. History will be made. Shaping up to be the trial of the century. Maybe the trial of the century. The trial of the century. But just might be the trial of the century. The tax man is here, Donald Trump. He will finally be forced to face the music. The legal walls closing in around Donald Trump. The legal walls are starting to close in on Donald Trump. Yes, this time, <laughs> Mr. Bond. <laughs> It truly is your doom. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to leave this room. Obviously, when I leave, I'm not going to press this button right here that opens all the doors and dismantles the killing machine I've established. <laughs> Don't follow me, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Perhaps if we limit the coverage to the issues at hand and try not to create an all-encompassing spectacle of the most banal of details, perhaps that would help. You're looking at live pictures in New York City of Donald Trump's motorcade. It's about a 20-minute drive between Trump Tower and the court building. Trump leaving Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue. They're now making their way across town along 57th Street. They just crossed Park Avenue, making their way up towards Lexington Avenue. He's heading down the FDR. To the Manhattan Courthouse on Chamber Street. Arriving at this intersection of American history with defiance. Arriving at the intersection of American history <laughs> with defiance, the brilliant juxtaposing of the gravitas of the moment with simple traffic terms was... <laughs> he arrived at the intersection of American history where he put a quarter in the parking meter of destiny. <laughs> Leaving the car! <laughs> looking to avoid stepping in the urine puddle of jurisprudence. <laughs> Seriously, are we gonna follow this guy to court every f***ing day? Are you trying to make this OJ? It's not a chase. He's commuting. So, the media's first attempt, the very first attempt on the first day at self-control failed. And I'm sorry to say that it... I'm sorry, hold on, we're getting breaking news. You know, he wanted to get a jury seated, so we had a lady... Bill, I'm sorry to interrupt. One, I, just for one second, I, I'm, I apologize. We're just showing the first ver uh, image of Donald Trump from inside the courtroom. It's a still okay. photograph uh, that we're showing there. Just want to make sure our viewers uh, know what they're looking at. <laughs> 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 
Yes, for our viewers who are just waking up from a 30-year coma. <laughs> This is what Donald Trump has looked like every day for the past 30 years. <laughs> Same outfit. So we have a photograph of Donald Trump in the courtroom. But do we really know what he looks like? <laughs> the man is a mystery, a yeti, if you will. Anything could be a deep fake. Do we have an eyewitness account, perhaps from a dismissed juror? Would you describe to me what you saw with Donald Trump while you were sitting inside of that courtroom? Not very much. Um, he was a, a bit ahead of me and off to the left. I didn't have a complete view of him today. <laughs> did, wait. Did I have jury duty this week? What the f***? Brother? <laughs> Motherfucker dresses like me too. This is. <laughs> anyway, coming up, more of our three part interview with a guy who nearly saw Donald Trump in the courtroom. <laughs> so we have a photograph. This is freaking me out, that picture. We have a photograph and we have eyewitness accounts. But do we have anything in a pastel? A courtroom sketch that we're getting in. Uh, right now, I'm looking at the courtroom sketch, and Mr. Trump looks like he is glowering. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a glower or just a, a, a glance. And I don't know how uh, it's, 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 it's art. It's not necessarily, uh, it's artistic journalism, but it's not a photograph. Why are you showing it to us? It's a sketch. Why would anyone analyze a sketch like it was? A, it'd be like looking at The Last Supper and going, why do you think Jesus looks so sad here? <laughs> what do you think he's, what do you think, it's because of Judas? <laughs> what if we interview one of the waiters at one of the tables from like a different section of the restaurant <laughs> who maybe didn't actually see him, but well, you know, we got time to kill. <laughs> well, I guess we'll never know, unless we could talk to the person who drew the sketch, but do we have the time? Nothing but. Christine Cornell, she was in the courtroom today, the official sketch artist. I want to show one of your sketches today. We're going through some of them, but this one, it appears in this one that his eyes are closed. What was happening here? My apologies, ma'am. I was sitting 50 feet away. I was having such a struggle to try and get those eyeballs in. Trinket shop in New Paltz. <laughs> Tell me, woman. Look, I mean, what the f are we doing? Uh, I notice here his head is perfectly round. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I like drawing circles. <laughs> At this point, you're probably saying to yourself, how many television hours have they devoted to what Donald Trump, a man who has not been off any of our screens for more than 30 seconds in the last eight years, looks like? The answer is not nearly as many hours as describing his every movement. Trump craned his neck to eye prospective jurors and flashed a tight-lipped smile. Leaning to the left um, a little bit, quiet, his arms crossed as well. Hunched over with his elbows on the desk. Looked through papers and periodically whispered to his attorneys. Fidgeted and leaned back the scowl fixed to his face while he sat squinting. He was actually biting his lip during today's proceedings. His lips pursed in that characteristic Trump way. <laughs> His eyeballs, gone. <laughs> the hulking former president stood up slowly. He walked towards me with a mixture of desire, scorn, and let's call it age-related confusion. <laughs> it was then that I realized that this former president of the United States has a front butt. <laughs> so, look, at some point in this trial, Something important and revelatory is going to happen.
but none of us are going to notice because the hours spent on his speculative facial tics, if the media tries to make us feel like the most mundane bullshit is earth shattering, we won't believe you when it's really interesting. It's your classic boy who cried wolf blitzer. <laughs> Look, it's a trial. It's boring, mostly. I've been on jury duty, and I can... That's not me! <laughs> That's a different guy! Why are you... It's not me. It may be me. Look, trials are a lot of procedural shit and side conferences and sidebars and what's exhibit 37-2A and you're not out of order, this whole court is out of order. Look, the one person who's had the most normal reaction to the trial so far is Donald Trump. Donald Trump fell asleep on multiple days during his criminal trial. As he should. I mean, he's been up since 2 a.m. rage tweeting. He needs his anger sleep. Look. We got a long ways to go here. It's the first day of a, the first of his 438 trials to come. Pace yourselves. And if you're bored, you can always start planning how you're going to f up covering his next trial and the sober mea culpa you'll deliver during his next term as president. Because the kinds of things that you are talking okay, about now are. Okay, okay, we get it. Oh, I, get it. I know that voice. Jessica, yeah. uh, how are you? But are, are you down at the courthouse? Are you there to give us a report? Uh, yeah, I am. And here's my report. John Stewart hates fun. <laughs> this trial rocks. Why you gotta be all get off my lawn about it? I, I don't necessarily sound like that, but well, well, I'm close. As I was explaining, though, the media has systematically failed to contextualize... Oh, John, please, you're killing me. My poor, sweet, naive, older than I remember John. What? I... Really? We need this messy bullshit spectacle. Every other news story is a massive bummer. This Trump trial is like an open window in a Greyhound bus full of farts. <laughs> Why are you trying to close the window, John? Why are you trying to make us smell farts? <laughs> You no, trying to make us smell farts. No, John, you were trying to make us smell farts. I would never do that. This that. trial I... is a gift. An extremely gross old man slash former president might go to prison for banging a porn star and trying to pay her off. And you don't want us to cover that shit all day long? <sighs> John, the first witness is named David Pecker. <laughs> You know, pecker is slang for wiener, John. <laughs> it's a peepee, -pee, a peeper. Uh, a you, you know, a, a, a dingle, a dongle, a flippity bit. You know. Can I, can I, can I, when you say peepee, -pee, but then the peeper. Yeah. Wouldn't that be the owner of the peepee? -pee? Different context. Okay. I'm just One checking. guy has the peepee, -pee, the other the peeper. I'm not trying to be a grammar police. I'm just saying. Look, I don't want to get in the weeds about it. Okay. <laughs> sure that I'm clear that I'm talking about the name David Pecker and that it has a double meaning and the meaning is for wiener. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm already sorry. tired. I'm already no, tired. No, I've, I've missed you terribly. I've missed you terribly. <laughs> Shit. And then here you come with your old-timey, highfalutin <laughs> media critique, ruining our good time, just like you ruined the 2012 Daily Show Christmas party. Not, I, did, I didn't ruin that. What's not fun about mocktails and tofurkey? I didn't ruin it. <laughs> Look, Jess, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I thought my commentary on the sketch artist was quite trenchant. Oh, you I... want to talk about courtroom sketches? Look at this! <laughs> Walter Cronkite, I have a 
pen and I scribble nonsense on my script before the show starts. Oh no, the Mets lost again. All right. Win. Did you? Oh my God. Jess, did you actually draw that of me? Yeah, dude, because it's fun to do and people like fun, John. Damn. <laughs> anyway, I should get going. I think I see Pecker across the street. David Pecker? I'm not sure whose penis it is, actually. <laughs>